How's it going everybody? Welcome to We Do Tech. Now today we're going to take a look at one of the coolest products that I've used in quite a while, but that's also kind of hard to recommend you actually are buying. And that is the ROG XG17, a portable gaming monitor from ASUS. Now, just before we get into what I like so much about this monitor, let's talk about what I don't like as much, and that is the price point. The XG17 is retailing for around $500 for the standard kit with a folding cover that does work as a stand as well. But then for $100 or more, you can get a collapsible height adjustable metal stand, which weighs in at almost just as much as the monitor itself. Now, don't get me wrong, the stand is actually really high in quality. It's very sturdy, it falls up into a smaller package, and it does also have a nice quick release plate for you to just clip off uh, the monitor. But for $100, it is quite a bit of pricey because you can actually just use a normal quarter inch tripod to mount the monitor on. But if you are a bowler and you don't really care about that $100, then the stand is actually really nice. So at that price point, it's certainly not up for everybody, but let's take a closer look at the rest of the XG17. Now as for the display, it's just big enough at 17.3 inches to game on and also nicely fit inside a laptop bag. And it does use an IPS panel with a max resolution of 1080p, which isn't anything too crazy, but what is, it does run at 240 hertz, which yes, is above 144 hertz. Thank you for that, Asus. Now, this is definitely not going to be for most people, but if you are a competitive FPS gamer that's on the go a lot, uh, then this is a really nice addition to add to your kit. Plus, what makes it so much portable as well compared to a lot of the other portable monitors out there is that it does actually have a bolt-in 7,800 mAh battery, so you won't need to connect any additional cables and power the device at least for around three hours if you are gaming at 240 hertz and over around four hours if you're just using it for standard media consumption at around 60 hertz. But if it does run out of juice, you don't have to worry, it does also charge up in just around two hours. All right, so you might be wondering why I've added in this section, why it looks so weird, kind of like I don't have any power. And the reason is because I don't have any power, we're currently experiencing some load shedding where for the next two or three hours, I'm not gonna have any power. But the reason why I wanted to add in this section is because I found another feature where this monitor is just going to be awesome at, and that is in situations like this where there's no power. Now, I'm currently editing the video on right there on my ROG laptop, and I'm actually able to still view my full image on the monitor right there and that just works so good. It's only, again, battery powered, single USB display cable, and I can see everything. And it's gonna last even longer than my laptop battery is going to last while editing this video. So I just wanted to add in that as well, another very nice feature for this portable battery powered monitor. You just, you don't need to just game on this thing. It's for productivity work as well. Now, thanks to the IPS panel, viewing angles are really good with only a little color change when viewing from a wide side. So that makes it perfect for a buddy gaming or just watching some videos while on the go. Now, even though this is still a 240 hertz gaming monitor, it still actually has a pretty good color accuracy. We have a my model here actually being pre-calibrated beforehand. I'm not sure exactly if everyone is going to be pre-calibrated, but mine was. Now, the panel isn't overly bright at only 300 nits, so it's mostly going to be an indoor use a monitor. It does have an anti glare coating to help with some sunlight, but it's not going to be anything too crazy. Now, as for the design, it is again a 17 inch panel that is full of metal, but that still is only 10 millimeters thick and only weighs in at around a one kilogram, which is 2.2 pounds. Now, thanks to that Mitchell shell, it does feel really well built, very premium, and it does have some flex, but not as much as you would actually think. 
Now, if you are in a pinch, the XG17 does have a one watt speaker located at the bottom, which isn't anything to brag about, but it is there and you can use it and it doesn't sound too bad. Now for I.O. on the side, you do get a micro HDMI, a DisplayPort over Type-C, a Type-C for a charging, and then also a headphone jack. So there are actually two ways to connect the XG17 to your laptop or to your gaming device, either with the micro HDMI that can then run off the battery, which will of course drain it, or while powering with that Type-C charging port, or you can just connect a single a cable like I currently have that does a power the monitor and also uh, shows the display. And that is going to use the display port over a type of C. Now you will have to make sure that your laptop or your device or uh, your phone or so on does actually support display port over type C. Otherwise it's not going to work, but it's a very handy little connection and just keeps it nice and clean with only, again, a single cable. But now just above the IO, you do get a four buttons there for power, for the menu, and then also to adjust the volume. The menu pretty much looks identical to other ROG gaming monitors, which is quite a nice, where you do also have a majority of the features like your cheat crosshairs, your FPS counter, shadow boost, blue light filter, and then also you do get eight different picture profiles. And then finally, getting into a gaming, it is not the most amazing gaming experience because of the smaller size, but I had a blast actually using it. Just the idea of a gaming on such a compact device just feels so fun. And especially because it runs at that 240 hertz, it's mostly going to play on like uh, CSGO or so on, uh, but it did feel extremely smooth and it's so uh, fun to do quick flick shots, even though I'm not the best at it. Along with that response time was also very good with a tested of four to five milliseconds. Plus you do have also adaptive sync, which it does reduce screen tearing. Now, something that I was a bit worried about was input latency. It has been a problem on the majority of previously portable monitors that I have used, where I get around to 25 to around like 40 milliseconds, which is definitely not that fun to game on, especially on some fast-paced games like CSGO. Uh, but luckily, that was not a problem for the XG17, with it having around a six milliseconds. Now, it's not as fast as some of the desktop equivalent gaming monitors, but it was at the point where I couldn't really notice it uh, in the games that I was playing. All right, so it's a really nice, fast-paced PC gaming monitor, but what about consoles or some mobile gaming? Because mobile is getting quite big and all consoles, yeah, it's also quite big. But unfortunately, it's not going to be the base device for those uses. For consoles, I couldn't really test it because I don't currently own one, uh, but they don't run at that high refresh rate like uh, 240 hertz or even 144 hertz, I believe, on most. So because of that, it's not going to be utilized fully. Even for the next generation consoles, I, from everything that we know so far, it's not going to run at that 144 hertz or even 240 hertz. So it's going to be a bit of a waste for that, but it's still going to be a nice device to game on at the least. Also, for your Switch, you can use it there, but it's gonna be the same thing. And for mobile gaming, again, you can just use it with that single cable if your device supports that. And it does work quite nicely, especially if your device also has like a desktop emulator. We tried that out a bit, and it does look really cool. You can game on it as well, but I think it's going to be quite a handy device if you wanted to use it as a portable workstation, where you can do all of your documents, all of your emails and everything, on a bit of a larger display that's also nice and a small. But again, you're not gonna utilize that 240 hertz, which is unfortunate, but at least you do have that if later on you want to connect it to some other device that actually supports it. So then in conclusion, the ROG XG17AH is the world's best portable gaming monitor by quite a larger standard. But again, it's not gonna be for everybody because of that higher price tag, the smaller size, the lower resolution, and then also that high refresh rate, even though that's really nice. Now, even with all of that, I still love this little beast. And I really, really want one. 
but I might need to wait till maybe ASUS will bring out a possible tougher version, which we know is a bit more of an affordable range. Uh, I think if they can do that, lower some of the specs, maybe go down to 144 hertz, maybe, uh, maybe up the resolution or 1080p is still fine, but at a more affordable price tag, that's going to be so cool and I just want one now. I even used it with my monitor as a second, as an external display and it looks so good. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my review of the ASUS XG17 portable gaming monitor. If you guys enjoyed this review, please like, share, comment, comment like always. Also, I will leave links in the description down below. It's, it is a little low on stock currently, but I will add it there as well. So thanks for watching guys. A big thanks to ASUS South Africa for sending it over as well. And then I will check all of you guys next time. Cheers guys.